all night. Party in the RPT, you know it's going down. I got that case of beer if you got the cooking crown. 69 missionary, doggy style cowgirl. 69 missionary, doggy style cowgirl. Keep it wicked when I'm spitting my shit. There ain't no competition when I walk and spit in this bitch. What's up, guys? We are back or here for episode one of Behind the Mask of Mr. Fuentes. Uh, I'm Franco. The man to my this side is Mr. Fuentes. And um, we got a new logo, or we got a logo made. And uh, do you want to show them a logo? Uh, yeah, of course. You want, you want to count down with me? Three, Three two, two, one. one. Bam. Wait, no, it didn't pop up. Bam. There you go. Bam. Bam. Right up here. The logo. Which, I mean, you'll probably have already seen it since it'll probably be like everywhere before you even click on the episode, but you know, whatever. Hell yeah. But uh, this is episode one. Uh, if you're dealing with episode zero, uh, we are going behind the scenes uh, of Mr. Fuentes, the man behind the mask. The man behind the lyrics, the meaning, everything uh, behind Mr. Fuentes. And uh, if you want to listen to uh, what a full explanation of what it's about, then you can go back to episode zero, click on that, uh, listen to its entirety. Uh, we also cover Fuentes' first song, which was a feature with Kansas uh, called Bust a Nut. Yeah, good times. Bust a Nut, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Today, before we enter the song, I did have a question. Um, you talked about Absolute Kings was already around for Bust a Nut. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's just a hilarious name. Um, you want to explain what it is? What what you, how you started Absolute Kings and everything? Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of um, I don't want to say funny, but uh, like you'll hear in episode zero, I was a little bit of an arrogant, cocky kid. Um, our younger person Still and on. and so whenever I thought about absolute kings uh, at the time I was listening to a lot of uh, tech nine so tech nine has a CD called absolute power and um, and then tech nine always kind of always said that he was like the king the clown the G you know in a sense um, and I just thought you know if I you know I was listening to a lot of different things you know uh, zero was around at the time so zero uh, was the king of the ghetto, you know, and then, you know, I think at the time Ti was like king of the south, and like it was like everyone was king of something at that at that era, uh, everyone's king of everything. So I was just like, oh, well, I'm gonna be better than all of them, so I'm an absolute king, you know, I'm absolute, you know, over, you know, everybody. So absolute kings kind of derived out of that idea that, you know, I was gonna be an absolute like best of all, like I was gonna be the king of all of them you know um that was the original idea um but then as you get older and you start kind of realizing what a king's supposed to do you know maybe it was meant to be that it turned out to be absolute king because a king is supposed to protect its people the king is supposed to uh, build up its people and when they when people are in trouble the king steps up to make sure that his people are okay and to me being an absolute king now is more of uh, being somebody um, who's absolute in himself, but also a strong person for the people he needs to be strong about. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. I'm not saying I am that person, but that's kind of my aim in life, that I can be someone that people can um, look up to in the future. And if they need anything or help, that I'm there, I'm the king to help everyone that I can you know, prosper and have better lives. And that's kind of my, my aim for that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you want to jump right into it? Part in the RPT. All right. Yeah. So our first one we're going to be doing episode one is going to be party in the RPT. Um, I can't tell you what year I dropped it, but, uh, Spotify can or Spotify SoundCloud can. So give me one second. Um, I wasn't prepared at all it says 10 years ago on soundcloud 10 years ago damn so it was released 2012 then so 2012 was when i dropped that that song um 
I mean, do you want any? Spe- you want to do any specific questions before I kind of start doing like some story time? Uh, yes. Um, what does RPT stand for? Oh, Rockport, Texas. Just in case we had any any viewers who didn't know. Yeah, um, so guardian. So I'm from a small town in Texas called Rockport. Um, and at the time, uh, all I did, all I was doing at that time was drinking and partying. Like that's all I did every, pretty much every day. I'd go to work, get off work, go get drunk with friends, sleep, go to work, and repeat the cycle. Like that's just what we did. And uh, unfortunately, for a lot of uh, people who grow up in Rockport, drugs and alcohol is a big. Um, time waster that we do because we're you know um i'm not saying we like everyone does it but a big collective of people i knew at the time were didn't have any goals or really in life you know we wanted to do things but we didn't have the discipline to do them so we party and um this was your first solo track uh to be released what was your uh, mind at before you released it were you had any, did you have any jitters any nerves or you just like you know fuck it everybody's gonna love this shit man that's almost exactly what i thought like i'm not even joking like i didn't even um i don't even know how to explain that but yes it's exactly how i felt i was like man after i made this song um i was like damn man people are gonna be like hell yeah but like i really didn't I've never really expected much from myself. It sounds silly to say, because I've always had this dream since I was younger, uh, about 13 or 14, that I was going to become a rapper. Um, I always have very low standards for myself, um, not with just women, but also um, my what I had for music. And um, so I kind of like always thought I was pretty good, but like I never really got the love, you know, so it was just really hard. And honestly, a lot of that shit before a party in RPT, if y'all go back to episode zero and listen to Bust the Nut, a lot of my older stuff was closer to that type of uh, style, in a sense, or that type of area. So really, Party in RPT was my first kind of, to me, breakout where I was actually did a pretty good job on a song. And I was pretty stoked about it. I mean, it was a, uh, I used Mac Miller's uh, Party on Fifth beat, and um I heard when I, I didn't even know it was from Matt Miller. Uh, one of my friends uh, had brought like a USB full of beats and I was just skimming through them. And I was like, dude, this beat is dope. I'm going to write a song to it. And that's all I, all I did. And then I found out after, well, while I was writing the song that it was off of that uh, Mac Miller song. I think that, I don't remember that. Blue, Blue Slide like, Park. Yeah. I Blue remember um, a couple years back telling you about it. Like, yeah. I like part of the RPT because it's a Mac Miller B, and you're like, I didn't know it was Mac Miller before. I was like, I'm a back, big Mac Miller fan, so I was like, if I heard it, I was like, fuck yeah, he sample Mac Miller, hell yeah. Hell yeah. But knowing afterwards, I'm like, nah, fuck Fuentes. I know, right? Fuck that guy. <laughs> um, what was the reception whenever you released it? Did you get a good reception? Did were you or were you just like telling everybody, hey man, this is my shit, this is a good shit, and then like they're like, yeah, it's cool. So that's gonna lead into a story. So. Um, whenever I released or whenever I uploaded Party in the RPT, um, I didn't really tell very many people. I think I made it. I mean, if I go back in my Facebook, I might have made a couple posts. Hey, I'm about to drop this song, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I've never dropped the song before, except for, uh, I think, uh, Busta Nut at the time. And I might have dropped one song with Gary as well beforehand. No, no, this is the first song I ever dropped by itself. So this is my first, like, official public song I was going to put out. Um, and like I said, at the time I was kind of partying a bit. So me and this girl, I got ecstasy for me and this girl. And we were doing ecstasy inside of my bedroom. And right before we, I did, I like even took the pill. I was like, all right, I got before we do this pill, I got to upload the song and I got to put it on the internet and then we can take the pill. So I don't do anything else after that. So I upload the song, I do everything I need to do, and then I'm like, all right, you know, let's take some ecstasy. So I took some ecstasy, and, um, you know, a little bit of time goes by, and I'm not even really worried about the song. You know, maybe about an hour goes by after my upload. And um, so I go back to my computer, and I'll, you know, if you, so the ecstasy that, 
certain ex ecstasies have different effects so they use different bases I, I didn't know it's going to be a drug class either franco but anyway um it has different bases so it has different effects so the whenever i was on this uh one it was making everything very bright you know so when i was staring at my screen it was just like super bright, like really, like it was really hard to look at it. And then like my eyes wouldn't stay still. So it would like twitch a little while I was like trying to look at it. It was really freaking hard to concentrate. So I'm over here trying to get through all the stuff. I'm getting to where I need to get to. And I'm just like having the hardest time to get through SoundCloud. And I look and I see it says I already had 134 plays in an hour. And I was like, what the hell? 134 plays. And I'm like. I called the girl that was with me over. I'm like, hey, does that say 134? <laughs> and honestly, she was just too much into her, her stuff. She didn't even pay attention to me. She was like, oh. Anyways, <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck? So I just like, at that point, I'm like, wow, you know, whatever. So it also makes you get sidetracked really fast. So I was just really, I got sidetracked, went off. And, you know, um, a little bit later, I went back and I was like at 187 and you know, like 30 minutes later, an hour later. And I was like, what the hell? That's crazy. Like, I'm already getting a bunch of plays. Anyway, going to the next morning, I had shares. I had people hitting me up on Messenger. They're like, hey, dude, like, badass song, bro, blah, blah, blah. Like, I love it. It's great. You know, definitely RPT people, man. You know, a bunch of people just messaging me, telling me how much they love the song. I think by the time I woke up, it had like 368 plays or something like that. Um, which for me at the time was crazy. You know, I didn't I didn't know, I didn't have an expectation. You know, I didn't know how many people were going to listen to the song. But in like one night, it had 300 plays. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, man, maybe I am badass. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, before we fully dive into the song, I think I had a couple more questions. Um, it sounds like you didn't have a plan on wanting to release it. Mm -hmm. What you, you just decided to release it, and that was it, or was there like, and how far along after uh, Busted Nut release did you release this one? Uh, it's probably like a year, maybe two, maybe three, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, a little bit of time had passed. Um, because I know I didn't I wasn't really versatile to versatile. It wasn't very verse. Yeah, I think verse is the right word. I wasn't really verse to all the new fangled age downloading the sound clouds and um, YouTubes and stuff like that. Like I knew with YouTube, you know, if it wasn't your stuff they would like flag you or take down the songs. You know, I don't know. I know nowadays they don't do that. They just give you a little copyright thing and just say, Hey, someone's going to make money off of this, but it isn't going to be you. And it's pretty much all they do. But before I believe they just used to take down like any um, beats or anything that people would do. So I didn't upload the YouTube. I didn't, um, I started, I didn't upload the SoundCloud. I didn't know where else I could even upload. I was still in this old age where I like, I got to make an album. I got to, mix it i gotta put it out like no one's gonna hear my shit until i put out an album so i was kind of still stuck in the old time and then i figured out you know a few people that i knew that uploaded the soundcloud i was like oh you're doing that shit oh then i could do that shit and so um that's where i started like figuring out soundcloud and that i could like get in there and uh, you know start uploading my own music to it and um, at the time, whenever you released it, were you and Gary Podunk already planning on doing uh, uh, speedballing? Or was that uh, did that come later on? No. Um, well, I don't know. If, we're already planning on doing something, for sure. Um, I don't know if it was... Well, yeah, we're working on speedballing. So, yeah. I mean, we already had... We, me and Gary were already talking. It was actually kind of funny because, uh, you know, whenever... I released this track. I um me and Gary already started kind of talking. Like I, he would come, I would I met already met Gary and um knew that he did freestyles and rap and then um it took about a good I wanna say six months to a year 
Um, Cause I was still going to college at that time. And that was one of the other issues was that uh, I was going to college for sound recording technology at Del Mar and Corpus Christi. And um, that last year, that last class was, is a very demanding class. You have to go in to record people, mix people. You had to take uh, your weekends off weekends to go up there and record people. Cause you had to work on their schedule. Um, and you know, you're pretty much your class time was mixing music. And then you'd have to book times after class to mix music. Like you had, a, it was a lot, it was very demanding. So I was pretty much pushed Gary off. Like we, I told, I kept telling them, we're going to do something. We're going to do something, but not right now. Like I need to finish college. I need to get done. And as soon as college is done, then we can, we can get shit done. And I got done with college. Um, if it, if it's 10 years ago, it says when I uploaded it, then I got done with college in 2012. So I already have released Party in the RPT um, for myself, but that was just a side project I did. And then um, college, you know, college is what I was doing too. And then, yeah, and then after that, me and Gary started working on the album because I told him we would. Okay, that's all the questions I have to before we get in. Um, did you <clears throat> want to talk about anything else before we dive into the, the beginning? So when I started, when I started recording, I believe I recorded everything on that party in the RPT in one, one sitting. Like, I think I started at like, um, like 10 AM or something. And then I had to go to work at 5 uh, PM. I think that day. So I, I work, I recorded from 10 all the way to five, the entire thing. Um, and during that time, I had a whole, I wasn't a very, I'm not a very good role model back in the day or probably even now. So I drank about six beers while I was recording that time. And everything actually came out really well. I was probably the most drunk when I did the fast part of the song <laughs> at the very end. Uh, uh, I'm jumping up like a ring and taking a bite of the I had some fangs. You know, that part was probably where I was the most drunk. And it was so funny too because I remember being so drunk and being like, "All right, I got, I got to articulate all my words." I'm jumping up like a ring and taking a bite. Anyway, I remember getting to work that day and I was just still pretty drunk, and I was just like, and then the boss was there, and she was like, "Are you drunk?" And I was like, "No," and she was like, "You should just go home." <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, I recorded that entire tr song drunk um, from front to back, everything. And that was pretty much, it's pretty much just an insider scoop. I just recorded the whole thing drunk. You, you can tell it's not your best. <laughs> um, it was my best at the time. It was your only one. You're right. Let's Dude, you're not even like, dude, I have to show you the demo one day. Me and you are going to have a sit down and we're going to listen to the demo that I was handing out to people when I had my first concert in Kansas. Um, man, that was... I'm, I'm not going to get a sugarcoat anything just because I'm a fan of yours and your friend. Uh -huh. uh, I like this song. I think the main reason I like it is probably because of the beat. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it is a great song. The lyrics are good. You've reused a couple of lyrics, I want to say, on other songs. Unless I'm tripping on this one. I'm not too sure. Probably. I don't know. I think the orangutan part, I want to say, I've heard it somewhere else. I don't think I've ever used that anywhere else. Me, personally. I don't know. Maybe. But, um, yeah, we'll just get right into it because uh, right off the bat, uh, I have a question. But we'll play it first, like, 10 seconds or so. <laughs> Now introducing the amazing, the astounding, the fabulous, the stupendous, the ever transforming, invincible, the incomprehensible, the egg McMuffin of rappers, Mr. Saul Puente, bitch. Okay. So that was that was actually Gary who did that uh, intro for me, by the way. Oh, I didn't even notice the the difference. In honestly, um, my first question. I don't know. If, did he come up with, the, with that part? Or did you write it down for him? Um, I think I had written like an idea of what I wanted him to say. 
And I was like, but you can basically put in whatever you want. So he wrote a lot of those adjectives into there. And I believe uh, the Egg McMuffin of Rappers uh, was also his idea. That, that was my question. Like, how'd you come up with Egg McMuffin of Rappers? So I remember him saying it to me. He was like, the incomprehensible. The Egg McMuffin of Rappers, <laughs> Mr. Saul Flintson. I remember the first time I heard it, I laughed so hard. And I was just like, dude, that's fucking great. And he was like, and I was like, well, like, he's like, like, I was like, like the commercial, right? And he was like, yeah, just like the commercial. And he was just like, so there was a lot of people don't remember this commercial because I, I do ask people and I, I remember it. I don't know, clear as day, but to other people it wasn't. But back in the day, McDonald's had this commercial that um, basically whenever they were talking about like something like, man, this is the Egg McMuffin of vehicles. Like this is the Egg McMuffin of drinks. Like this is basically they're saying it as the best of the best, you know, in a sense, like it's the Egg McMuffin of something. So, you know, when he said the Egg McMuffin are rappers, I immediately knew what he meant. And it was just the funniest shit in the world. But there's no, like, big secret or anything behind it. It isn't like I, you know, ate an Egg McMuffin while we were rapping or something. And he was just like, that's the Egg McMuffin are rappers. <laughs> I thought it was because your, your head is egg-shaped. Is it? I mean, I feel like if, when you shave, whenever you're shaving, uh -huh. it's egg-shaped. Uh, it's very oval. Yeah. It's like Adam Sandler. All right, then I guess I play some more of it. It's like Adam Sandler. <laughs> I just got that. No, SoundCloud, I don't want this. Solomon, thank you, thank you. This thing on? All right, cool. Uh, I'm just trying to speak a word I'm still in the rap game like I'm Luke Bomb the third The way I organize rhymes you'd probably say it's absurd But if you listen really close I'm probably something you prefer uh, I'm so fresh, so clean Always looking for a party like I'm a damn fiend Beer pong, wet thong, baby this is your song And if you're coming home with me there's just no way you can be wrong Hey baby girl, can you have me a Bud Light? An ice cold beer, yeah, that's what I like. A party in the club, I'll be there, just hang tight. Party's at Jack so you know what's There's all a night. party in the RPT, you know. That was the first verse. First verse, first verse. Yeah, so in the very beginning, there's a part where he's like, the Egg McMuffin rappers, Mr. Saul Fuentes. And uh, Gary used to call me sometimes, because Gary just said weird shit all the time. It would call me Saulamander. So if you listen in the background, you can hear him say Saulamander. <laughs> um, it's pretty funny, but it's there. Like if you don't, if you're not listening for it, you don't even hear it. But if you're looking out for it, it's there. Like Saulamander. <laughs> um, this is your first. This is your first official song as uh, Saul Fuentes instead of Notorious Ace. Yes, I, I believe so. Um, I after last episode, I had you explain to me. Do you want to explain who Lupin the Third is, just in case people don't know? Oh, uh, Lupin the Third was an anime um, about a thief um, who would. I mean, it's pretty much it. He he is a trio, sometimes quadruplo, and he would um, go on thief heists and very witty, funny. It was just a, a show that I used to watch back in the day called Loop on the Third. Uh, there's no other lines in here that, in the first verse, I don't know if you want to go over anything. Yeah, whatever lines, whatever you want to do. No, there's no other lines I oh, have. You, oh, you want me to go over it. Yeah. Um, um, not really. Um. No, I mean, the first verse, I mean, even I know this later in life. I mean, I don't, I like the song, but I know it's not like my best writing. Like that first verse is very much just, I don't want to say propaganda, but it's party propaganda. That's all it is. It's just me talking about party stuff and trying to hype up people for being at a party. It's pretty much it. I mean, it's not nothing fancy. I don't think I use very fancy metaphors except for the loop on the third. Um, 
line, but everything else is pretty pretty standard. Beer pong, what thong, baby? This is your song. And if you're coming up with me, there's no way you can be wrong. So Bud Light, did you just use that for the rhyme, or did you like Bud Light? At the time, we drank a lot of Bud Light, yeah. Um, but I mean, it also had good, had a good rhyme, <laughs> or was a not a good rhyme, but an acceptable rhyme. The party's at Jack, so you know it's all night. Who is Jack? So um, <laughs> I had a friend back in the day. We used to drink with a lot, and sometimes he'd have parties um, where a bunch of people would go, um, and his name was Jack. Jack Jester, but we just call him Jack J, you know. So Jack J is where we'd be at, you know, party in the cove. So Copano Cove and Rockport is kind of like the boonies of Rockport, like the back area where nobody really goes. Um, all the houses are pretty spread apart too, so you could have giant parties out there and no one would care at all. So yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, you want to play the chorus and the second verse, or just the chorus? Um, whatever you want to do. I'll do chorus second verse. Hell yeah. It's going down. I got the case of beer. If you got the cooking crown, if you've never been to Rockford, this is just a party town. If you're liking what you're hearing, then turn up the sound. There's a party in the RPG. I got the case of beer. If you got the cook, come in. If you drink, I'm going to fill it, fill it up. And you know that we're from Texas, so we screw it, screw it up. Round two and I'm attacking the beat Like the beat was a female and she's a dog in heat It's a doggy dog world but I'm looking for a squirrel So I could bust a nut Come here baby girl Hell yeah this party's crazy and wild Like a porn like a river you probably think it's denial Your girlfriend hating on me Dog I think she's in denial But this girly giving me the I should dig in my style I heard they call her water gun So I guess she's a squirter If I take her home you best believe I'm gonna hurt her Oh shit you got the twin tonight to doppelbanger If you're hating on me check out the metal banger that one was lyrically a lot better. <laughs> I use a lot of metaphors in that one and a lot of catchy things. Um, uh, my favorite line for that one's um, looking for a squirrel so I can bust a nut. After knowing about bust a nut? Yeah. <laughs> um, my favorite line in there was the doppelbanger because it's a made up word and I had to make it up. And it's like, it was pretty funny to me. Like, Oh shit, she got the twin instead of doppelganger. It's doppelbanger. <laughs> yeah, when I was writing down the lyrics, I was like, did he really say that? Oh shit, she got the twin tonight's a doppelbanger. Um Yeah, I mean that that you know, it's kind of witty too. Like, I guess they, uh, I heard they call her water gun, so I guess she's a squirter. Like, you know, it's not the the best or whatever, but it was it was funny. It was witty. I I, I enjoyed that verse. Uh, I actually don't perform that verse a lot. You know, whenever I do um, concerts, I usually only perform the first and third verse. I don't really perform the second verse because um, in concerts you kind of want to cram as many like songs you basically can in, and so doing full songs is um, I've never paid attention. Pretty hard, but yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, anything you want to talk about in that verse? Are you good with... I mean, everything's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, I mean, I'm, you didn't do it intentionally. You didn't do it at all because you didn't know. You'll listen to Mac Miller, but if you're hitting on me, check out the Middle Finger. He had a song called Middle Finger with uh, Cobra... Fuck. I can't remember the name. But I was like, when I first heard it, I, at first I was like, oh, it's Mac Miller's song. Maybe he's playing homage to Mac Miller, the song. Knowing now, you, you weren't, but. Yeah. Sorry, Mac. RIP, bro. <laughs> I forgot who the hell that song was. Uh, Cobra Starships featuring Mac Miller. So, yeah. That's why I thought of whenever I first heard it. I was like, oh, that's cool. And now it's a lot less cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like the beat was a female dog and she uh, she's a dog in heat. I like that one. Yeah. The beat. Like a, yeah, okay. That makes sense. I was like, I don't even remember how that started. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yes, but, uh, uh, and then uh, and, you know, and then jump it off of that, go into like it's a doggy dog world. But I'm looking for like I don't know. A lot of that was pretty to me. I, I like. I was impressed by younger me. He did a pretty good job of putting that those stuff together. Um, you know, a lot of it really didn't make sense either. But I think that's kind of the 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 fun part of rap that I think a lot of us sometimes miss is that. You know, you're sometimes you're supposed to have fun with the the song. Sometimes the lyrics aren't going to make sense, but you know, if they make if they're funny and you know, obviously I was having fun with it. You know, as long as you're having fun listening to it, like it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, man. Just write something fun, record it, and get on with the next one, man. Yeah, so I, I still like the lyrics. Like I said, I mean, it was a fun song and everything. Begin with the final verse. Down, I got that case of beer. If you got the cooking crown, if you've never been to Rockport, this is just a party town. If you're liking what you're hearing, then turn up the sound. There's a party in the RPT, you know we throw it up. I got the case of beer. If you got the solar cups, I mean, if you drink, I'ma fill it, fill it up. And you know that we're from Texas, so we screw it, screw it up. Get drunk, get laid, that's the plan for tonight. Looking out for table corners is the blur of my sight. Drunk and slur, drunk and stumble, starting to be apparent. Got the Trojan in my pocket so I don't become a parent. Six bottles popping so this party's a revolver. Straight shots to the head, call that my problem solver. I'm starting to feel woozy, man. I'm starting to feel drunk about the flow like a maniac. Get straight club. So I'm jumping up like an orangutan and I bite those out like I have some bangs. In my drunk, you know it bangs. If you get too close, blow your brains. Blow your mind, this is my time. I kill five time for a moment to shine. Moments to ride. Murder line, call me the butcher man because I'm hurting swine. Going out and wilding out. They can't know what I'm talking about When I rap my tongue, I shout These motherfuckers like sauerkraut Sour puss, lay my swiss I smoke, I'm just like Volta Kush Try to take me out, but you have no chance I'll say the same when I just advance Ha! I dedicate this song A lot happened in that one uh, I didn't write down all the lyrics Because I couldn't understand all the lyrics <laughs> But um I didn't really go over the chorus Yeah, I was going to say Was there anything in the... The chorus, is, I mean, I don't want to say it's simple, but it was pretty straightforward, I think. You know, if you ever been to Rockford, this is just a party town. If you're liking what you're hearing, then turn up the sound. There's a party in the RPT, I, I, you throw it up. I got the Casey Beer, if you got, oh no. I forgot what was. You got the Casey Beer, you got the Coke and Crown. Is that what I say? Yeah. Nah, I don't think that's what I say. Uh, the second part of the chorus is I got the case of Beer, if you got the Civil Cups. You got the solo cup, so hand me an empty drink. I'm gonna fill it, yeah, fill it, fill it up. Be like from Texas, so we screw it, screw it up. Did you listen to a lot of um, uh, DJ Screw? Um, honestly, no. I mean, I, I tried, you know, I, I mean, I don't say I tried, I have, you know, a lot of my friends, um, especially when I started hanging out with like Gary and Jack J a little bit, um, they listen to Screw pretty heavily, so um. But me personally, I didn't have like screw in my rotation. But you know, it's you're in Texas. <laughs> at the time, it was really big. You know, at the, at that time, like ten years ago, like zero and all that was super popular. You know, everyone was listening to zero, um, Paul Wall, Kiki, uh, or Lil Kiki. Um, who else was there? Like Trey, Blackhawk. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that, you know, chopped the screw was just such a uh, common thing, you know, around there. And so it was just kind of the idea, you know, Texas, you always listen to chopped the screw music. Uh, the most clever line of this whole entire song is probably the got the children in my pockets, I don't become a parent. <laughs> um. That was like a fun one because I was like, drunk and slur, drunk and stumble, starting to be a parent. And that's actually the clever part. Drunk and slur, drunk and stumble, uh, starting to be a parent. Got the Trojan in my pocket so I don't become a parent. That one. Um, yeah, it was. I, I I agree with you. I am awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, that was a really, that was a pretty good line. Um, let me see. Third. I, one of the parts I liked was uh, six bottles popping, so um, so I call this a revolver because there's six shots in a revolver, six bottles popping. Um, straight shots to my head, call that my problem solver. 
because people call their guns their problem solvers. But in my case, I'm drinking alcohol to solve my problems. So I just, I compared on the last verse, the bottles to a revolver and then compared the shots to being a problem solver. But people use alcohol to solve their problems, quotation marks. So that, to me, that was pretty, that was pretty uh, clever at the time when I wrote that. Um, and then the whole last verse, I mean, we could break it down line by line, but, you know, I'm jumping up like an orangutan, which I don't know if you want to talk about that one or you just made, brought it up earlier. Um, I don't know anything you say after that. Okay. So I'm jumping up like an orangutan and I bite throats out like I have some fangs. In my trunk, you know it bangs. If you get too close, you can blow your brains. Blow your mind, this is my time. I killed Fall of Time for a moment to shine. Moment to rhyme. Or, oh, moment to rhyme. Uh, I killed Fall of Time for a moment to shine. Moment to rhyme. Um, i probably say something else. Call me the butcher man because I murder you swine. Um, and then I'm going out. I'm wilding out. Nick Cannon knows what I'm talking about. Because at the time, or even still, I think yeah. he's still the show wilding out. Um when I rap, I sometimes shout, eat motherfuckers like sauerkraut. <laughs> and then uh, sour puss, lame ass wuss. I smoke competition like bowls of kush. Try to take me out, but you have no chance. Um, I, y'all stay at the same while I just advance. It's all together is. So I'm jumping over like a ring and ting and I bite the thought like I have some fangs in my trunk. You know what bangs get too close can blow your brain. Blow your mind. This is my time. I kill for a time for a moment to shine. Moment to rhyme. Murder line. Call me the butcher man because I'm ready to swine. I'm going out. I'm wild and out. And the cannon knows what I'm talking about. When I rap at something, shout. You motherfuckers like sour crop, sour puss, lame as wish. I smoke up a dish like bulls of kush. Try to take me out, but you have no chance. I'll say the same while I just advance. Whenever you wrote that, after you wrote that, what was your, what was going through your head? What do you mean? Like, I, how much of your own dick did you suck when you, after you wrote that? Oh, man. I just, like, looked like... <laughs> 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 um, no, it was, you know, it was such a bitch to record. Like, such a bitch to record. Especially drunk. Like, that wasn't fun. Um, it was... It took me so long to get that down. But once I finally did, it was just, like... Because I, I went faster than I think I do on the beat. I, I think the beat's like... Dun, 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 So I'm jumping up like an orangutan and I bite the dot like I have some fang. In my trunk, you know it bangs. Get too close and blow your brain. Blow your mind. This is my time. I kill for a time for a moment to shine. Moment to rhyme. Murder a line. Call me the bitch man because I'm murdering you swine. I'm going out. I'm wilding out. Nick Hannon knows what I'm talking about. When I rap, I sometimes shout. Eat motherfuckers like sourkraut. Sour puss. They must wuss. I smoke competition like bulls kush. Try to take me out, but you have no chance. I'll say the same while I just advance. So. That's probably closer to the speed I was going, but, um, but it sounds fast, you know, I don't know. It's weird. Um, it's so crazy to think about that track now and like stuff I've done since then. Um, uh, cause I've like rapped so much faster, but at that time I was like, dude, I'm the fucking fastest rapper alive. <laughs> um, I got nothing else to say about it. Uh, I just was wondering what your mind was at whenever you have, after you wrote it. I know you're just. This is the best. You know, they get so this out well, immediately. <laughs> um, one last thing, I guess, on the dedication. I would go through the whole thing, I guess. So, before you press play, can you hear me? Oh, you can, can you hear me? But, yeah. Um, so, I put out, okay, you're about to hear, you can hear the, you can play through the dedications, but I actually had to redo this whole thing because so many of my friends from Rockport had heard, heard this song, and some of them weren't even technically quotation marks my friends, just people I knew from parties, but they would come to me. Like, I remember I released this track, and Spring Break was like, two weeks later or something like that. And I went to spring break, like in Port A, in Port Aransas. And people were coming up to me that I knew from Rockport, but not like they were from Port A, but people from Rockport, whenever we went out to go party with them, 
And I don't even really know these people. They're like, dude, why didn't you shout me out in the song? Like, blah, 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 blah. So when I, I redid this track, whenever I released it on the speedballing, uh, speedballing, speedballing um, album, I um, added more people in it. So that whole ending dedication became so much longer. And I didn't, I don't think I changed out the track. So this is the older version of it, but there's a, there's a longer version on the album, which is the one you're probably used to since you have the album. Yeah. Gary Evans, Jack Palmer, Jack J, PJ, Rachel and Becca Maloney, Leah Fuentes, Gio, Ben Chip, Armando Cantu, Travis Phelps, Chad Either, Amy Noel, Nick Lawson, Jessica Jipping, Don, Jessica Lee, Breacher, Kelsey, Chelsea, Sky, Journey, Joey Griffin, Joseph Mason, Jake Newberry, and all my coworkers. If I forgot anybody, sorry. Part of the RPT. Call me. Okay, now, now that you point... Point Dove Men Plus Care Ultimate is an ultra-hydrated ah, antiperspirant that glides on smoothly without Let's irritation. So, Fuck you, Eds. Um, now that you pointed out, I did hear that uh, one of my... one of my um, The things I want to point out was that when you say Gary Evans, on at least on the CD, uh, you can hear the... In oh, the no! Background. Yeah, I was like, that's yeah. pretty dope. I like that. That was the main thing. I think at the end of it as well, you said, oh, yeah, and you said a name, but you sounded so angry when you said that name. No, I said, um, if I forgot anyone, sorry. Partying RPT, call me. No, but uh, the last name, I think you said like a, a Lisa or something. Or... I don't. I don't really remember. Oh, and Nicole Clark. <laughs> that looks so pissed off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's a story behind that one too. <laughs> But it goes into another song that I did. Night Out. So <laughs> we'll talk about Night Out, but I guess this is kind of because I we're gonna talk about Night Out, right? Yeah, I don't listen. So I don't want to like there's a lot to go to Night Out, but originally you, you, Night Out, the first one? Yeah, number one. Okay. Well, Night Out's the next track that we're gonna be talking about. So uh you can give them a little taste of what's what's come. So, so I remember I talked about Port A, people coming up to me and telling me, hey, you didn't put me in your track, blah, 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 blah. So one of the girls was Nicole Clark. Um, and see, I made a mistake. <laughs> I had, I was like, all right, well, the next time I make a track, I'm going to shout her out. So. So I made the night out track, and at the very end, I say, where did I park? What was that girl's name? Oh, Nicole Clark. <laughs> and, okay, so I fucked up. That was bad on my part. Like, I put out the song, and all the people that listened to Party in the RPT before, all the same people listen to this track, right? It's a very small town. And get and we go to the bars a lot. And guess who's one of the number one bartenders in Rockport at the time? Well, actually, still, she still bartends um, in Rockport. Was Nicole? So after that song gets released, I go to the freaking bar with my friends or whatever, and she did not serve me drinks the entire night. I had to get friends to go buy me drinks and bring them to me because she would not serve me a drink whatsoever and that wasn't really the reason so i ended up going back and changing it taking it off and re-uploading it without her name in it um not because she didn't want to serve me drinks but just because like honestly i didn't think she would get pissed off i don't know why i didn't think she would get pissed off i was like oh um 
I thought it was just gonna be funny. Like I, I, I thought she was gonna laugh about it. Like, oh, he used my name for the girl he said he was fucking in the song. That's that's hilarious. Like, but it wasn't apparently. It wasn't as hilarious as I thought. And then as soon as all the stuff started happening and her friends started talk, talking to me and everyone was telling me what was going on, I was like, oh, she's actually mad about this. I have to, I have to change this. Um. So yeah, that was a mistake on my part. You know. Uh, I apologize. I took it down, and then a couple months later, I'd seen her at the bars, and I apologized to it, and she was just like, she kind of didn't, she just acted like it didn't really happen, so I was just like, all right, as long as we're acting cool, and you're still giving me drinks, and we're good. <laughs> um, and then, you know, when I re-released uh, this track for Speedballing, I, you know, made sure that her name stood out among everyone else, that, so we know for sure, Nicole Clark got shouted out for being someone that parties in the RPT. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the whole the whole thing on that. Yo, man, I'm kind of upset you didn't shout out me or Nick or Andy or Emo So well Productions at all. I know. I, I suck. I'm going to have to redo it again. Yeah, man. <laughs> Ten well, years ago. I do it nowadays. That list is going to be so much smaller. I don't even talk to like I don't want to say like 90% of those people anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's be a question I was gonna ask as well. If you talk to any of them, um, none. My brother's in there. And I don't even talk to him. I think you said my cousin Miguel. I talked talk talk to, talk to him. I talked to oh. Miguel. Yeah, is that's he the one that was Miguel. on um, leftover pizza? Yeah. Okay, that's dope. Uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about this track before we put it to the uh, behind us? Um. No, I mean it was a it was a definitely um definitely not my best track and Franco's correct, you know. I mean, my I li- I go back and listen to it and the delivery is not as good as it could have been. Um, you know, the production obviously was in my bedroom and I barely know any knew anything about mixing at the time. So it was a uh, it was still a little rough, but you know, it was a song that got me some attention in my my home area and um it was kind of cool. You know, it was you know, when I when songs like that happen, you know, it's pretty cool. And, you know, I was, man, I was 22 years old, fuck, 10 years ago. Holy shit, bro. I let a lot of time pass by. Anyway, let's not dwell on this anymore. Yeah, yeah it's an old song. It's done. <laughs> it makes feeling better. Everybody's, like, beginning tracks suck ass. Uh, me and Andy, like, our shit's not even, I didn't leave, have that touch the live day. And then, like, have you listened to Infinite, Eminem's first album? Mm-hmm. Pure garbage. Yeah, I used to jam that track album all the time. One of my favorites. Uh, it sucks. Yeah. He used to flip shit like he was playing with a spatula in a toilet. That was crazy. Well, uh, next episode is going to be Night Out. Is that one? That one's on SoundCloud as well, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, if you want to follow me, I do wrestling content. Um, my Instagram is Braston Tacos. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Emo Sowa Productions, E-M-O-S-E-W-A Productions. That's awesome for backwards. We have a lot of shit on there, wrestling content. Uh, Nick and Fuentes do horror reviews every other Wednesday. Nick and Juan do other horror reviews every other Wednesday opposite of that Wednesday. Basically, every Wednesday, there's a horror review. Yeah. <laughs> either you're getting, you're getting Fuentes or either you're getting one, one of them. And um, we do skits every now and again. We haven't done one this year, actually. So we might want to jump on that. But, uh, yeah, follow me wherever you want to follow. Yeah. You dig that? Anyway. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I'm Mr. Fuentes. If you haven't heard any, if you haven't heard of me before, you know, we're breaking down my tracks. You know, thank you. Thank you, Franco, you know, for giving me the opportunity to talk about my music and stuff uh, that goes on in my music. Uh, if you haven't heard of me before, there are songs that are more recent <laughs> uploaded onto uh, Spotify and um, anywhere you pretty much listen to streaming music. Just search Mr. Fuentes and it'll pop up. I definitely would recommend, you know, listening to one of my newer tracks, uh, Something Hostile or Taking Shots. Uh, definitely uh, a little more polished from what you probably heard today. Um, And then if you want to go and listen to that track, I did notice that the quality of the sound, 
I know it wasn't the greatest quality to begin with, but through the stream, it, it didn't sound that great either. It sounded like it, it, the quality got a little less. Anyway, if you want to listen to a little bit better quality, go to SoundCloud, uh, search Mr. Fuentes, and part or just party in the RPT or Mr. Fuentes, and you should find it there. Um, but yeah, I mean, thank y'all for listening. And uh, if you want to follow my Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, you can follow me at Mr. Fuentes361. And I think I'm done talking. Well, with that, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Peace.